the DJ eases a spliff from his lyrical lips and smilingly orders, cease. Legends, the um, club that opened in March of 1990. First time I walked up these steps was the first night, night it opened. It started uh, two guys, Kevin Q and Sean Mel, um, who promoted a night on the Friday night, an uh, alternative night. They got offered the Saturday night and they rang me up and said, Do you want a DJ on it? Um, we're thinking of doing something that. Uh, covers the sort of indie dance scene. I do actually remember telling him, you can't play house music. No, I remember. Whatever you do, don't How play could, house music. You know, we're, we're in this club tonight, looking at all these lovely faces and like reminiscing about things. And I actually told him, don't play house music. And we slipped a few house tracks in. And they predictably went down better than some of the other tracks. Tell this to everybody, wherever they are. About the road to take and the record to make. We can all get an equal slice of the cake and create a perfect world for every nation. Then pass it down to the next generation. It's not impossible for us to get that far. All we gotta do is change the way we are. So stop chasing that fast car with the ball. I love to say peace and nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah, nah. That time in Warrington, there was basically no house music scene, there were no house clubs. Um, there was either your Mr. Smith's kind of clubs, or there was a couple of indie nights, and there was nothing. Uh, anyone who wanted to go clubbing went to Liverpool, or went to Manchester, or went to London, or went further afield, etc. Well, I used to go to the Hacienda years before Legends even took off, and I think the thing about the Hacienda was it, it was a great club to go to, but having something like Legends on my doorstep where there was people from Warrington that you'd probably never ever meet, but grew great friends with. Mm -hmm. It was massive. There was quite a few of the clubs in Manchester and Liverpool at the time who were getting quite a reputation, just for not quite, having quite an intimidating atmosphere. Um, and I think certainly when the people who started to come to Legends, quite a lot of them were people who had gone to some of those other clubs, didn't like the way they were heading and the atmosphere they were creating. And they wanted somewhere where they could come, which didn't have that kind of level of intimidation. It was a, a, a much more friendlier kind of space. 
from memory, on the first night of Legends, there was probably two or three hundred people in. Um, enough to make it a good night. And we knew it was a success. And we knew that people um, enjoyed it. Now, this is pretty strange for a rugby ground club in the middle of a dirty town like Warrington, but something magical happened back then. And from the eighth week, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I remember being a punter in here, and it was unbelievable. and said, look, I've got a load of mates of mine who can turn up if I can do it with Richard. Sean I spoke to, Richard I kind of knew, not, not really to talk to, I saw him at the Hacienda. So the Hacienda played a part in music, you know. Steve Williams was a big influence. We kind of went to different clubs. Um, 
we went to some of the same clubs, but we also went to some of the different stuff. I went to some stuff down in London and maybe a different kind of stuff in Manchester. And I think we both brought, you know, lessons from those kind of clubs together, um, which kind of worked. I basically get a pile of records, I go through, what do I think, you know, what do I like, what do I want to play, and then play them. Some, you get a massive reaction, do you see what I mean? So it just didn't matter if I believed in those records or would play those records. After a couple of months, you could see that people were starting to get it. And not just put up with it, they were starting to like it. Basically, Mike lived around the corner from me, from the estate where I used to grow up. I um, always remember Mike being like five years older than me, he was into his BMXs and all the rest of it. So when you're at school, obviously five years is a big age gap. Um, sort of like through being a punter at Legends, got speaking to him about music and all the rest of it. Starts going around his flat, starts listening to more music. Um, he bought me some tunes from Eastern Block. Um, and we just become friends from there, really. We get to 91, September, Richard Garvey has to leave for university, very clever lad, and um, Mike asked me to start DJing here now, I was only 18 at the time, and pretty daunting really when I look back, but um, all in honour, all the same. I think the first time I come, I just remember walking in up to this dark and dingy club, and then it was a room of madness, there was people everywhere. Speakers, on chairs, it was just crazy. Dancing on the speakers, shaking things and things falling on you, roofs falling on you. People came, the long, the short, the tall, anything, any which way but loose. Definitely there was a, a Carlisle look, you know. Um, 
I remember someone being there from Ireland, I don't know whether he wandered in by mistake, but <laughs> you know, down south, different places, you know, how popular, yeah. queuing around the block, queuing for tickets in the day, you know, it was just madness really. You'd be here about five o'clock, there'd be hundreds of people under the car park, mm -hmm. congregating, chilling out or getting together. That's Obviously true. people who travelled all over the country come down. Mm -hmm. You'd have people in the back car park, sound systems out, music going. For me it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, it's just unbelievable the amount of people that were down here. Yeah. The, the, the sort of standout tracks for me at Legends, are the ones that probably are the standout tracks for a lot of people, really. You know, I remember now, Boca Juniors is just one of those tunes that there wasn't a single club in the North, I don't think, who played that record. So it was the only club you'd heard it. And it became one of those tunes that everyone at Legends knew, loved, and associated with the club. For me, it's got to be Boca Juniors. Yeah, I'll go with that. It's the standout tune of Legends for me. Genius. Just the whole thing, raise your standards if you it's there, it's everything about mm -hmm. legends. It was, it was an eye opener. I'd never heard it in any other club. Mm -hmm. Just totally, something blew, blew me feet off on the area, even now. Goosebumps. You know, ones that stand out in particular is Saturday's Angels, Indie House Bomb, which was just brought in by Richard Garvin. Um, absolutely amazing track that used to rip the roof off every time it was played. Saturday's Angels is another kind of strange one. It's a, it was a band, I think they were managed by Sean McCluskey in London or something like that, who ran the Brain Club. And he'd sent a white copy to a friend of mine and we played that and that just turned into an absolute monster.
someone come in just at the right time. 